Hi, so I'm going to just demo creating a vase, so which is, is a 3D object, but I'm going to make it reasonably flat. On this particular vase, I'm going to incorporate some pre-printed fabric rather than printing onto the felt so you can see what happens. This is transfer printed onto uh, a wool gauze, 100% wool gauze. And, uh, and I'll have shown you the setup for printing a long piece. But the first thing to do, if you haven't done it before, is you need to measure the vessel that you're going to create. So, just get the right end of the tape measure. So the first thing to do is to measure all the way around the circumference, which on mine is 39.5 centimetres, so I'm going to round it up to 40 centimetres. Just going to write that down. And it, this particular vase is slightly narrow at the bottom. If it's a lot narrower, I'll actually measure the bottom as well and create a template that goes in at the bottom. But because it's only a little bit, what I'm going to do is shrink it more at the bottom to fit when I felt it. So I'm um, not going to worry about that. So we've got the circumference, which is 40 centimetres. And what we need to do is to divide that by two to get the diameter, which is 20 centimetres. I always round up or down, depending, whatever. And the next thing to do is to add 30% to allow for shrinkage. So 20 plus 30% is 26. So 26 centimetres for the width. And then I also measure the height. Now I always add a couple of extra centimetres so it can just go over the top a little bit. Um, so if I add two centimetres, that makes 14 centimetres. So probably make it 14 to 15 centimetres high. So if I say 15, because we can always cut it down a bit, and then add 30%. So 15 plus 30% is 19.5 so we'll make it 20 centimeters so the template is going to be 26 centimeters wide and 20 centimeters high so here's one i prepared earlier <laughs> so um so this one's approximately 26 wide and 20 high now you can cut it quite a bit higher and then just felt within that space which is what I normally do but on this occasion I'm going to do it actually to size um, so we have our template this is just a bit of thick foam and um, you can use thick plastic anything like that I tend to work inside out with a vase so what I tend to do is to turn the fabric so that the right side is facing inwards into the template I'm just going to put a few little fibres on first so that it's got a little bit of interest to it. So if I'm putting fibres on, you've got to remember that you're working backwards. So what I do is I just put on a few very, very fine fibres onto the template. So this is a very fine merino. I'll just put a few. If it's too thick, you're going to see it. I don't really want to see too much. You could even use a colour. So I have some blue here you could trap it in with some blue and I'm just going to put a little bit of yellowy orange near the bottom a bit of complementary colour now this is throaster's waste dyed throaster's waste so it's fine silk threads and I've got some white this is a very sort of fine silk yarn Japanese so the the wool on the template will hold this in when uh, when we felt it and put the fabric on so I'm just going to wet it slightly now it's going to be a bit tricky to turn it over because it's uh, very very fine and it's floating around so I'm going to move that out of the way so you can see so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put my a piece of fabric on the top this side and then turn it round and put the other bits on the other just place that on and wet it flatten it I'm going to turn it over now then so I'm just going to 
put a few more fibers on this side again quite nice just to have a bit of a complementary color just to give it a bit of a, a zing be only very very subtle okay so now I'm going to pull in the fabric nice and tight so uh, it's a bit shorter than the actual template now I've created a repeat pattern so where this joins it should hopefully um, the line should match so I've sort of done a two in one so I'm showing you how to print onto the fabric first but also to do a repeat pattern now the this is going to overlap so I'm going to just put a little bit of wool down the join keep it on the fabric otherwise it'll show up on the on the other side of the felt it's a really nice fine layer and I'm going to bring this one over and I'm going to line up don't know if you can see I'll just wet it So it's not perfect but it's not too bad so if you can see if you can see there you can just see through where the join you can see the lines that continue so it's not too bad we'll get away with that one and then what I tend to do is just put a few more fibers down the edge just to make sure it's in place if you wanted to have a little bit more color showing through you can add some colored fabrics uh, behind the wool and it'll it'll go through if you use a really dark color it might not look so nice um if it's if you have the white of the wool and a very dark black say it'll might look a little bit strange but you can always just put a little bit of a mid color or a light color on top and then it'll add to this i'll make it in a sort of wavy shape i'm not going to put too much on because i'm also going to put some pre-felt on now there's no not really much point in putting any fibers onto the wool here because it's going to be behind but it might be that this color would show through a little bit so you could just try a little bit but you won't see the silkiness of the thread just give it a little bit of a wet now normally i'd put my um bubble wrap on, on the top and then just flip it over but because of the setup of the video so everything's in the right place I haven't done that so I'm just going to flip it over and then I'm just going to pull these pieces in maybe a slightly different blue a little bit darker not sure what it'll look like hopefully it'll look okay and I've now got the fibres on, I'm going to put some pre-felt, I can find the bit, here it is, so I've got some um, of the nice silk and merino pre-felt that I like to use and uh, I'm going to just lay that over the top, now the join's on the back so I'm just doing it from the front, I'm just laying that sort of in the middle, like the bubble wrap. Give it a little rub just to make sure it's all in place now i'm just going to flip it over like i said probably do it between two pieces of bubble wrap normally okay so i'm just going to i don't know if you can see that they i've sort of pulled the edges so it's not too straight i don't want a cut edge or it'll then um, show up i'll just wet that down and then I'm going to pull that nice and tight can you see I've just made it a little bit bigger and now I'm just going to tear away the edge and that helps create a nice join where you won't really see it it's a bit like they do with wallpaper okay so that's um, ready to felt now and um, it doesn't matter that these are too big and hanging over because we can trim those off later okay so I'm just going to uh, rub it, roll it and give it a good felt and, um, and I'll come back and show you a little bit more. So I'm just putting it between the two pieces of bubble wrap. I'm going to give it a good rub. 
and I like to just regularly just on, along the edge of the foam just give it a nice rub to make sure that the edges are really close to the edge of the foam otherwise you can get a ridge forming so I'm just going to rub it for a few minutes and then I shall start rolling it turn it over again just nice and tight against the edge that's why I like using this foam because it's got a little bit of thickness to it so it's easier to do your edges and then you're going to just rub it make sure that the fabric is um, sticking to the wool so I do rub it for quite a while before I start rolling it just to make sure it's got a good seal Okay, so um, so I've been rolling it for quite a while now, and what I tend to do is to um, have a look on the inside and just see if the fibres are coming through. And they're coming through a little bit; you won't be able to see. So what I'm going to do is take out the well. First of all, I'm going to cut this end because that's joined together on the edge of the template. So just to open that out. I'm going to take the template out. Now you can see, turn it inside out. So I like to just check that the fibres are coming through and they are pretty much just a little bit. So I'm just going to um, roll it a little bit more, turn it back inside out and roll it without the without the template in, a bit more water on it. I'm just using them um, li liquid soap flakes. So you just have to be careful at this point that you don't rub it for a long time and forget to separate it because otherwise it can stick together. You just keep opening it out. It's better to just keep rolling. If in doubt, just keep rolling. So you can see now I'm just rolling it between one piece of bubble wrap. So it doesn't matter if you have it between one or two, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to turn that round, turn it over, roll it again. Then you just roll it from the sides keep separating it we'll just give it a lengthways roll so as you can see at the moment it's it's too big so what I'm going to do is to shrink it now so I'm going to just throw it around a little bit it's good to make it wet and sloppy because it's quite light because it's not that big so you want to um, Put plenty of soapy water and it just helps give it a bit of weight and just um, throw it and that helps the fibres come through the holes and then I'll also give it a bit of a rub. I'm still inside out so I tend to do it more so I'm shrinking the width rather than the height at the moment. There's plenty of height there so I just sort of loosely fold it up, keep separating it, give it a good throw. A bit soapy now, just get some water into it out. So it's uh, just lukewarm water, it doesn't have to be too hot. If it's too hot the felt can, the wool can felt before the fibres get through, so it's best to 
to be too hot. And then I tend to lay it on the bubbles and just give it a good rub. So it's not fragile. A bit too uh, generous with the soap flakes. Right, so let's see if it's getting anywhere nearer. I'm going to turn it out. Okay. What I tend to do, especially as it gets tighter, is I turn the glass upside down and then I slide it on that way. So it's quite loose at the bottom still, so I'm going to really give it a good shrink at the bottom. So I tend to just um, grab it and sort of twist it a bit. You can see I'm not very gentle. I was saying you have to be gentle with it so you don't wash the image off. <laughs> but um, as you can see, I'm not being particularly gentle here. Hopefully it'll still be there. So for the bases and the tops of the vases, I tend to just sort of roll it around in my hand. I don't know if you can see that. Just to help shrink the top and the bottom because that tends to be where it's loosest. And you want it to sit tightly to the rim of the glass. So you can see that's starting to tighten up. Just check the height. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to just tweak the bottom a teeny bit so this particular wool it gets quite crinkly when it shrinks if it was a cotton gauze it might have less texture but the texture is quite nice with the wavy look of the fish and when it gets pressed it'll um, flatten it a little bit okay So I think that's probably just about about there. So you can just see the join a little bit. So I think that's where the join was. And I just tweak the bottom so it's flat. I'm just going to rinse them off and um, I'll be back. I'm going to give it a little tweak so that the wool comes away from the glass so that if you have a plant in it um, doesn't touch the sides. So that's pretty cool. So just need to neaten the bottom off now. I quite often do it while it's on the pot. Just give it a trim. Okay. And just take it off, give it a little rub so it doesn't fray. Okay, so I'm just going to let that dry and then I'll press it and then it's finished so the the image of the fish is a little bit very clear but I'll show you when it's dry and um, when it's ironed and we'll see the difference this is the fish vase that I made I'm just going to take the creases out of that so just dining the inside going round it Got a little bit of a persistent crease in it. And just that's why um, steam iron is quite good because it helps you get rid of the creases. Fix on there. 